My name is Damon Amlung. I'm a geotechnical engineer for the United States Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center. In this presentation, I'll cover the facilitation of dam and levee risk analyses. The facilitator plays a very important role, and to be successful, the facilitator will need a diverse set of skills and experiences, and there's no substitute for experience. Every facilitator has their own style, their own personal spin they put on the process, and there's room within the process to be yourself. In fact, when facilitating, you're encouraged to be yourself. But no matter what your style is, you need to create an open and honest discussion and a positive environment for teamwork so that complex problems can be better understood. Facilitation is a key element of risk analysis, and it's important for all phases of risk assessment. It's the process in which an individual leads a team in solving problems and reaching consensus with the purpose of meeting the required objectives of the evaluation. The slide says group, but it's very important that the group become a team, and it is the facilitator's job to get that group to work as a team. As a facilitator, you are the objective leader of the process, not necessarily the evaluation of the technical problems. The facilitator leads a diverse and multidisciplinary team that has been assembled for a specific task, and it is important for the facilitator to clearly lay out what the task is and why the team is doing it. Different levels of risk assessment have different requirements, and members of the team will have different levels of risk assessment experience. So everyone needs to understand the objectives and what is required, and much of this starts up front prior to elicitation sessions. The team must prepare, and it is a facilitator's responsibility to ensure that information and analyses are available, checked, and reviewed in advance. During the risk analysis meeting, the facilitator leads the team in developing potential failure modes and directs the team in the risk estimation procedures, allowing and encouraging the discussion and documentation of alternative viewpoints throughout the process. At the end, it is the facilitator's responsibility to review and to certify the report, ensuring that it is faithful to the discussions that took place during the meeting. To be successful as a facilitator, you need to be objective. You need to be open-minded and be a leader. Team members are gonna have varying opinions. They'll also have varying personalities, some of which are easier to manage than others. The discussion will need to cover a wide range of issues, and as a facilitator, you need to give the team freedom to brainstorm, the freedom to think and to be creative, all while keeping them focused on the task and the objectives of the assessment. You need to be diplomatic and find ways to keep the discussions balanced such that each team member has ample opportunity to be heard. You also must have the technical expertise to understand engineering principles across disciplines to understand the bigger picture, and to keep the evaluation in its proper context. The set of knowledge and skills required is much of what's been covered over the course of this training. You need to know the guidelines and the procedures of the agency, and be able to objectively screen long lists of failure modes, boiling things down to the project risk drivers. You need to be able to develop event trees that describe the step-by-step -step progression of potential failure modes. You need to understand loading scenarios, consequence estimation procedures, really everything that is needed for risk analysis calculations and how to do them. You need to understand uncertainty and confidence and how it impacts risk analysis and what bearing it may have on the decision or course of action. Facilitation is something that is learned by doing, doing, not watching. Doing is in participating in risk assessments as a team member first, completing the risk calculations, writing the reports, if you're just starting out and are not qualified to be an official team member, that doesn't mean that you sit quietly in the corner while the risk assessment takes place. Be sure to think along with the team. Write your estimates down and ask questions. Be engaged and try to be part of the discussion. It's good for the team to have to answer questions because they'll have to answer questions when they're briefing decision makers too. To be a facilitator, at a minimum, it is required that you be licensed, that you have a diverse experience in dam and levee safety engineering, have served as technical expert on at least two risk assessments, although more is better, and have written the main aspects of at least two risk assessment reports, and have facilitated at least two risk assessments while under the guidance of an experienced facilitator. Beyond this training, and to reiterate, the best way to develop as a facilitator is to get involved with as many risk assessment projects as you can. As an observer and a risk assessor first, but then later as a co-facilitator. Every project is different, so you'll get to see different types of dams and levees with different potential failure modes in different geologic settings. you also see how different people facilitate and lead the team. Pay attention to what worked well and what may not have worked so well. 
Try new things each time you facilitate, always looking to refine and to improve your approach. Like with anything, the more you do it, the better and more comfortable you will become. I've touched on many of these, but here is a list of the facilitator's responsibilities. It's the facilitator's responsibility to coordinate efforts between the dam or levy owner and the risk assessment team, to facilitate the PFMA and the team elicitations, and to ensure the agency's methodologies are followed throughout. The facilitator is responsible for keeping up with best practices and methods, for making sure the team is diverse enough and experienced enough for the project and the type of evaluation. After the team elicitation, the facilitator reviews the report to make sure the assumptions are clearly documented and that the case is clearly and sufficiently made for the risk assessment. The facilitator will also either present or participate in the briefing of the risk assessment results and recommendations to decision makers. Here's a list of the types of facilitation that are common in dam and levy safety. Potential failure modes analysis, screening level risk estimates like periodic assessments and semi-quantitative risk assessments, and more detailed quantitative evaluations like issue evaluation studies and dam safety modification studies. So to pull it all together, I hope I've impressed upon you how important a good facilitator is to the success of a dam or levy safety risk assessment. The facilitator needs to be a technical expert, but have the people skills to listen and to communicate effectively, and to be a leader capable of managing teams with diverse experiences, specialties, personalities, and temperaments. The facilitator stays involved and guides the team from start to finish, starting with the initial preparations and the potential failure modes analysis all the way through the final presentation to the decision makers. They are the team captain and essential to making this process work.